Swedish cuisine is the traditional food of the people of Sweden. Due to Sweden's large north south expanse, there are regional differences between the cuisine of North and South Sweden. Historically, in the far north, meats such as reindeer and other semi game dishes were eaten, some of which have their roots in the Sami culture, while fresh vegetables have played a larger role in the south. Many traditional dishes employ simple, contrasting flavors, such as the traditional dish of meatballs and brown cream sauce with tart, pungent lingonberry jam, slightly similar in taste to cranberry sauce. Swedes have traditionally been very open to foreign influences, ranging from French cuisine during the 17th and 18th centuries, to the sushi and café latte of today. <laughs> General features Swedish cuisine could be described as centered around cultured dairy products, crisp and soft often sugared breads, berries and stone fruits, beef, chicken, lamb, pork, eggs, and seafood. Potatoes are often served as a side dish, often boiled. Swedish cuisine has a huge variety of breads of different shapes and sizes, made of rye, wheat, oat, white, dark, sourdough, and whole grain, and including flatbreads and crispbreads. There are many sweetened bread types and some use spices. Many meat dishes, especially meatballs, are served with lingonberry jam. Fruit soups with high viscosity, like rose hip soup and blueberry soup blabarsopa, served hot or cold, are typical of Swedish cuisine. Butter and margarine are the primary fat sources, although olive oil is becoming more popular. Sweden's pastry tradition features a variety of yeast buns, cookies, biscuits and cakes, many of them are in a very sugary style and often eaten with coffee fika. History The importance of fish has governed Swedish population and trade patterns far back in history. For preservation, fish were salted and cured. Salt became a major trade item at the dawn of the Scandinavian Middle Ages, which began circa 1000 AD. Cabbage preserved as sauerkraut and various kinds of preserved berries, apples, etc. were used once as a source of vitamin C during the winter today sauerkraut is very seldom used in Swedish cuisine. Lingonberry jam, still a favorite, may be the most traditional and typical Swedish way to add freshness to sometimes rather heavy food, such as steaks and stews. Sweden's long winters explain the lack of fresh vegetables in many traditional recipes. In older times, plants that would sustain the population through the winters were cornerstones. Various turnips, such as the kalrot (Rutabaga), aptly named Swede in British English, were gradually supplanted or complemented by the potato in the 18th century. A lack of distinct spices made everyday food rather bland by today's standards, although a number of local herbs and plants have been used since ancient times. This tradition is still present in today's Swedish dishes, which are still rather sparingly spiced. Both before and after this period, some new Germanic dishes were also brought in by immigrants, such as people related to the Hanseatic League, settling in Stockholm, Visby, and Kalmar. Swedish traders and aristocrats naturally also picked up some food traditions in foreign countries, cabbage rolls being one example. Cabbage rolls were introduced in Sweden by Karl XII who came in contact with this dish at the time of the Battle of Poltava and during his camp in the Turkish Bender and later introduced by his Ottoman creditors, who moved to Stockholm in 1716. An early version of Kaldolmar was first published in 1765 in the fourth edition of Gelpreda i Hushalingen für Unga Fruntimber by Kajsa Ward, though it was closer to the Turkish dolma than later dishes. Husmanskost Swedish husmanskost denotes traditional Swedish dishes with local ingredients, the classical everyday Swedish cuisine. The word husmanskost stems from husman, meaning house owner without associated land, and the term was originally used for most kinds of simple countryside food outside of towns. Genuine Swedish husmanskost used predominantly local ingredients such as pork in all forms, fish, cereals, milk, potato, root vegetables, cabbage, onions, apples, berries etc. Beef and lamb were used more sparingly. Beside berries, apples are the most used traditional fruit, eaten fresh or served as apple pie, apple sauce, or apple cake. Time-consuming cooking methods such as redningar roux and langkok literally long boil are commonly employed and spices are sparingly used. 
Examples of Swedish husmanskost are pea soup, artsopa, boiled and mashed carrots, potato and rutabaga served with pork, rotmos med flask, many varieties of salmon such as gravlax, inkot lax, fried, pickled, varieties of herring, most commonly pickled but also fried, au gratin, etc., fishballs, fiskbuller, meatballs, kotbuller, potato dumplings with meat or other ingredients, palt, potato pancake, ragmunk, varieties of porridge, grot, a fried mix of pieces of potato, different kind of meats, sausages, bacon and onion pit eye panna, meat stew with onion collops, and potato dumplings with a filling of onions and pork kropkakor. Many of the dishes would be considered comfort food for the nostalgic value. Dishes akin to Swedish husmanskost and food traditions are found also in other Scandinavian countries. Details may vary. Sweden is part of the vodka belt and historically distilled beverages, such as branven and snaps, have been a traditional daily complement to food. Consumption of wine in Sweden has increased during the last 50 years, partly at the expense of beer and stronger alcoholic beverages. In many countries, locally produced wines are combined with local husmanskost. Husmanskost has undergone a renaissance during the last decades as well-known or famous Swedish chefs, such as Tor Rettman, have presented modernized variants of classical Swedish dishes. In this nouvelle Husman the amount of fat which was needed to sustain hard manual labor in the old days is reduced and some new ingredients are introduced. The cooking methods are tinkered with as well, in order to speed up the cooking process or enhance the nutritional value or flavor of the dishes. Many Swedish restaurateurs mix traditional husmanskost with a modern, gourmet approach. Dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Swedish traditional dishes, some of which are many hundreds of years old, others perhaps a century or less, are still a very important part of Swedish everyday meals, in spite of the fact that modern-day Swedish cuisine adopts many international dishes. Internationally, the most renowned Swedish culinary tradition is the smorgasbord and, at Christmas, the jewelbord, including well-known Swedish dishes such as gravlax and meatballs. In Sweden, traditionally, Thursday has been soup day because the maids had half the day off and soup was easy to prepare in advance. One of the most traditional Swedish soups, artsopa is still served in many restaurants and households every Thursday, a tradition since the Middle Ages. Artsopa is a yellow pea soup, commonly served with pancakes as dessert. This is a simple meal, a very thick soup, basically consisting of boiled yellow peas, a little onion, salt and small pieces of pork. It is often served with mustard and followed by a dessert of thin pancakes see pancakor. The Swedish armed forces also serve their conscripts pea soup and pancakes every Thursday. Potatoes are eaten year-round as the main source of carbohydrates, and are a staple in many traditional dishes. Not until the last 50 years have pasta or rice become common on the dinner table. There are several different kinds of potatoes, the most appreciated is the new potato, a potato which ripens in early summer, and is enjoyed at the traditional midsummer feast. New potatoes at midsummer are served with pickled herring, chives, sour cream, and the first strawberries of the year are traditionally served as dessert. The most highly regarded mushroom in Sweden is the chanterelle, which is considered a delicacy. The chanterelle is usually served as a side dish together with steaks, or fried with onions and sauce served on an open sandwich. Second to the chanterelle, and considered almost as delicious, is the porcini mushroom, or Karljohansvamp, named after Charles XIV John Karl XIV Johan, who introduced its use as food. In August, at the traditional feast known as Kraftskiva, crayfish party, Swedes eat large amounts of crayfish, boiled and then marinated in a broth with salt, a little bit of sugar, and a large amount of dill weed. Some Swedish dishes are <laughs> Meals Meals consists of breakfast in the early morning frukost, a light lunch before noon lunch, and a heavy dinner middag around 6 or 7 in the evening. It is also common to have a snack, often a sandwich or fruit, in between meals Most Swedes also have a coffee break in the afternoon, often together with a pastry In all primary schools, and most, but not all secondary schools, a hot meal is served at lunch as part of Sweden's welfare state. According to the Swedish school law, this meal has to be nutrient dense. Topic: 
Breakfast Breakfast usually consists of open sandwiches smorgas, possibly on crisp bread The sandwich is most often buttered, with toppings such as hard cheese, cold cuts, caviar, mesmore a sweet spread made from butter and whey, ham skinka, and tomatoes or cucumber. Filmolk fermented milk, or sometimes yogurt, is also traditional breakfast food, usually served in a bowl with cereals such as cornflakes, muesli, or nakbrod, and sometimes with sugar, fruit or jam. Porridge is sometimes eaten at breakfast, made of rolled oats eaten with milk and jam or cinnamon with sugar. Common drinks for breakfast are milk, juice, tea, or coffee. Swedes are among the most avid milk and coffee drinkers in the world. Swedes sometimes have sweet toppings on their breads, such as jam like the French and Americans, or chocolate like the Danes, although many older Swedes chose not to use these sweet toppings. However, orange marmalade on white bread is common, usually with morning coffee or tea. Many traditional kinds of Swedish bread, such as sarapslimpa less fashionable today, but still very popular are somewhat sweetened in themselves, baked with small amounts of syrup. Like in many other European countries, there are also lots of non-sweetened breads, often made with sourdough Swedish breads may be made from whole grain, fine grain, or anything in between, and there are white, brown, and really dark like in Finland, varieties which are all common. Barkis or burgas is a localized version of challah usually made without eggs and at first only available in Stockholm and Gotbog where Jews first settled but now available elsewhere. Main courses Seafood A limited range of fish and other seafood is an important part of the Swedish cuisine. Farmed salmon from Norway has become increasingly popular. And pickled, sweetened herring, inlagged sill, is the most traditional of Swedish appetizers. Shrimp and lobster are specialties of the Skagerrak coast. There is also the fermented Baltic herring that with its pungent aroma is both loved and hated, in Swedish, surströmming. Desserts Common desserts include Pastries and treats In recent years, American brownies, cookies, and cupcakes have become popular in Swedish cafes and restaurants. Kaffebrod, coffee bread. Bakelser and other types of kaffebrod, or more colloquially fikebrod, are various forms of pastries, pieces of cake, cookies, and buns that are usually consumed with coffee. See fika. Popular kinds of kaffebrod available in a traditional Swedish konditori, coffee shop, patisserie, include. Topic: treats. In the summer, various seasonal fruitcakes are common. Strawberry and cream cake is highly regarded. Strawberries are also often eaten on their own with sugar and milk or cream. In the late summer and autumn, apple cakes and pies are baked. The apple cake is often served with vanilla custard, but sometimes with ice cream or whipped cream. During the winter holidays, traditional candy and pastries include. Candy Other typical Swedish candy includes Drinks Sweden is second placed among the heaviest coffee drinking countries in the world. Milk consumption in Sweden is also very high, second only to Finland. Milk is bought in milk cartons, and it is no coincidence that Tetra Pak, the world's largest maker of milk cartons, was founded in Sweden. Milk is considered the standard drink to have with meals during weekdays in many families, for both children and adults. <laughs> Christmas beverages Sweet drinks <inaudible> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Fruit soups. Fruit soups, especially rose hip soup and bilberry soup, are eaten or drunk, usually hot during the winter. Topic: <laughs> Liquor. The most important of stronger beverages in the Swedish cuisine is brandvin, which is a general term that includes mainly two kinds of beverages, aquawit and vodka. When consumed traditionally it is often served as a snaps, but vodka is also popularly consumed as a drink ingredient. Rennet is often considered to be the national vodka of Sweden, but other highly popular brands are Explorer Vodka and Absolute Vodka, the latter being one of the world's best-known liquor brands. Most forms of brandvin have around 40% alcohol. The production of hard liquor has a tradition dating back to the 18th century and was at a high in the 1840s. Since the 1880s, the state-owned Systembolaget has a monopoly on selling spirits with more than 3.5% ABV, limiting access. Hembrandt moonshine used to be made in rural Sweden, but production has lessened in recent years due to more liberal rules for the import of alcohol as well as increased smuggling. Punch is a traditional liqueur in Sweden that was immensely popular during the 19th century. It was adopted as the drink of choice by university students, and many traditional songs from that time are about the consumption of punch or are meant to be sung during the collective festivities that were part of the cultural life in the university student associations at the time and still is. <laughs> Beer Beer is also widely consumed in Sweden and the typical Swedish beer is lager of a bright and malty kind. The brands Prips Blå and Norlands Guld are common examples. In the last few decades, many small breweries, microbreweries have emerged all over Sweden offering a wide range of styles and brands. Nils Oscar Brewery, Doug's Ale och Porterbrygeri and Nark Kulturbrygeri are examples of these young Swedish microbreweries. Many microbreweries in Sweden are inspired by the U.S. craft beer movement, brewing American styles or styles commonly associated with American craft breweries, e.g. American Pale Ale and American IPA. <inaudible> <inaudible> Food and society Broadinstitute the Bread Institute once campaigned with a quotation from the Swedish National Board of Health and Welfare, recommending eating six to eight slices of bread daily. Drinking milk has also been recommended and campaigned for by the Swedish National Board of Health and Welfare. It is often recommended to drink two to three glasses of milk per day. A survey conducted on behalf of Molkfremjande, an organization promoting consumption of Swedish milk, concluded that 52% of Swedes surveyed drink milk at least once a day, usually one glass with lunch and another glass or two in the evening or morning. Low fat products, wholemeal bread, and other alternatives are common. Grocery stores usually sell milk in four or five different fat levels, from 3% to 0.1%. See also Sami cuisine Cuisine of Finland Cuisine of Norway Culture of Sweden Danish cuisine Icelandic cuisine List of Christmas dishes Swedish festivities <laughs>